are doing great. Today's video is really interesting. It's about this beast of a grinder, or let's say beautiful grinder, the Molar X2. So a brief history about Molar, they are a company based in Taiwan and they are a team of passionate people. They are really passionate about coffee. Of course, to come up with this grinder, you definitely have to be passionate about coffee and specialty coffee. The philosophy behind grinder is that slower is better. They love grinding at slow RPM. Basically, the rotating blade will be rotating super slow. Specifically in this grinder, they offer three options of grinding RPM at 40, 60 or 80 RPM. It is an interesting philosophy we will speak about it but before that let me tell you a bit more about this grinder this has recently came with a specialized and dedicated burr to this grinder it's called the artifato burr it's a collaboration between them and another cnc machining company it's a very interesting burr geometry and it's like no other it recently came they designed this burr they tested so many burrs in the past in the previous smaller conical burr grinder they used to use mazer 83 millimeter burr i have experience with that burr and Personally, I'm not a huge fan of it. I know many people love that burr. However, I think it is kind of outdated burr. The reason why so many people love that burr is that it meets the edge between the strong body of conical burrs and the clarity of flat burrs. With the 83 millimeter Mazer burrs back in the day with the roasting profile and before the upgrades and the innovations in, in burr geometry, it was a really good option. However, I do feel that it is an outdated burr and hence, my preference not leaning towards it it has an on off switch on the back it's a major switch if it's on you do hear some vibrating sound inside the grinder it is barely hearable but it is there if it, the grinder is on even if it's not turning on just connect it so we can just turn it off from the main panel and it will go off here you can see the rpm knobs and on the side is the on off switch it looks beautiful. The design is wonderful. It is really heavy. I think it weighs around 14 kilograms. And uh, yeah, they offer you this handle to hold it from place. Honestly, with the grinder at this way, you do want a handle to hold it. It is super steady on the table. Motor inside of it is a step down motor. Basically, it's a commercial grade motor, that, that really capable motor, but they step it down and insert it in the body of this grinder single dose. I did try to grind at the slowest RPM, which is 40 RPM, and I went powder coffee even finer than turkish coffee through maybe 500 grams and until that weight i started feeling that the motor is heating slightly but i was going powder fine and slowest rpm which is surprisingly zero lag so it is safe to say that this motor is more than capable for this grinder it's an extremely powerful motor to adjust the rpm it is on the side it's simple three clicks it has satisfying feeling to it the grinder comes with this huge dosing cup at the beginning i felt that it is really big it is really large dosing cup it is very close to the grinding shout it saves you the mess and uh, if you are using a dosing funnel you just put it inside dosing funnel and it slips right through the port filter by the way speaking about dosing funnel it comes with a wonderful dosing funnel I feel like it is an overkill for a dosing funnel it is really heavy and does not have magnets i would prefer a lighter one with magnets practicality over over quality let's say the grinding shout is magnetic you can take it off have the magnet off and return it. The grind adjustment mechanism is super smooth. It is probably one of the best I've tried so far. And this is style to rotate the grind adjustment dial. It has those small grooves that helps you to grip it. Let's open the grinder. You remove the grinding dial. It comes with a small red arrow to tell you that it is aligned for this way. Don't put it to the right or the left, put it straight. It has three high grade springs i would call them the yellow ones they are really stiff and will last for a long time i did try to open the grinder to reach the motor it was quite the job and uh, i just was curious to have a look about the motor and when i did open the grinder i was surprised of the electrical control chip inside of it basically all the interesting parts is inside the motor inside the electrical chip they have designed their own algorithm of the grinder in order to achieve that consistent rpm what they have told me is that if they decided to have it at fixed rpm with different roasting profiles like live roast and dark roast you might be risking that the grinder is running at a different rpm so they've put an algorithm inside the motor inside the ship the control panel to understand the resistance from the beans if it is light roast to still have 40 rpm if it's a dark roast to still have 40 rpm so it kind of adjusts itself depending on the roasting profile the birds they are silver knight coated similar to the ssp silver knight 
you can say they will last you more than a lifetime of grinding coffee beans. They do mention that it is pre-seasoned and I do not know what they mean about that because when I first got this grinder, coffee was spurting everywhere. I was not able to get a good extraction. After running six kilograms of coffee bean, the grinder drastically changed. The extraction became much smoother, much cleaner. This brings me to the taste wise. Taste wise of this grinder is a bit tricky. At first, I felt that the thing is with this with large conical burrs, you do see something in the porta filter that many people spoke about. You, when you look at the porta filter after tamping, you see that there are bolder particles. It is almost like if the ground coffee is not consistent. It is true and not true at the same time. Seeing those bold particles, it, it will make you think that it is inconsistent. However, in reality, different burrs style they offer different consistency, and that is the reason behind them. The intention behind this consistency is to offer you that tasting profile with this ground consistency. If that makes sense once again. In the Mazer 83mm, I did notice the same thing, the inconsistency after tamping. However, even after running 5 and 10 kilograms in the Mazer 83mm burr, I did not enjoy the coffee or at least I was not surprised to the point like makes me to buy for an expensive motor to fit that burr. I was really getting better results from cheaper grinder. With this one, I would say the shot can be described super smooth. As a matter of fact, extremely smooth. Now what I mean about smooth, it's difficult to put it in words. Enjoyable and easy to drink. Like the espresso shot, there was no harshness, no astringency. And surprisingly, it's a conical burr. You get that body and at the same time you are getting clarity. So I'm safe to say and I'm confident, although this is an initial feedback and I will come back to this grinder on a final review, this burr is unique. It is unique. It is offer you super smooth espresso shots. Usually grinders with different RPMs, it is very tricky because people like go up down, then they decide to decide one RPM. With this one, although they gave you only three options, low, medium, high, 40, 60, 80 RPM, I would say there are valid options because even personally for me, I don't want so many options in RPM here. I want only 40 or 80. I even did not try the 60. I tried it, but I did not feel like there's a much effect or much difference. Between 40 and 60, there is a difference. It might not be very apparent at first, and I do need to test it further. With 40 RPM, the sweetness is slightly higher. With 80 RPM, the consistency is slightly higher. All in all, they were enjoyable shots and delicious. This is at the lowest RPM. Some medium light roast Ethiopian coffee beans by Bean Bros. So while grinding it's not much worse, it is kind of the same pitch, consistent. And uh, it might sound funny even listening to it is satisfying, the slow crushing of the beans, it is satisfying sound to hear. Really I cannot stop watching the beans being crushed in this giant conical burr and I would say maybe glass or acrylic cover on the top, it would be a very nice touch and idea to consider. Speaking about the lid and the top of the grinder, it comes with this um, silicone blower and slash hopper. You fit it in place and uh, you take your time installing it from the side. It is slightly stiff to insert it in place, but uh, once it gets in place, it is securely and locked. It does not fit the luxurious design and the quality of the grinder, but it is practical. It gets the job done. And uh, between all the silicone hoppers that I've tried, I would say this has the best fit on the body of the grinder. It fits in place really well if you take your time inserting it. And uh, yeah, but it takes all the luxurious style of the grinder. So let's continue grinding. It's like high. Unless you do RDT, you blow the grinder multiple times, you take the grind shot and make sure nothing is stuck in there, you might have around half gram retention inside the grinder. So you really need to pay attention to that. The grinding shot has magnets, but they sit slightly lower than the surface and they're not really strong. So any accidental hits to the grinding shot and it will fall off. I love the color scheme. I know I mentioned this multiple times, but really there's something about this crimson ruby red with black and the stainless steel finish. It is just beautiful. So overall to wrap this video up, I was planning for it to be a short video, but it ended up being a very long video, I think. 
So if you are looking for budget friendly, definitely this is not the option. It's a high end expensive grinder. We did make many videos about budget friendly grinders, manual electric grinders and different price ranges. Feel free to check those videos. However, when it comes to this grinder, there is something in your espresso journey. You start to appreciate the build quality, the passion that goes behind high end tools like this one. We do have plans in the future and in investing and testing all the high end grinders. Hopefully we'll do that. But for now, as an idea, just to explain when it comes to expensive grinders, your priority is not budget. I know you want to invest your hard earned money in good place. And this is by no means saying that this is not worth it as a grinder. It is just the fact that what are your expectations? Are you expecting to taste something like not coffee? In the end, it is coffee and grinders are very similar. However, it is the build quality, the longevity, the routine, the uniqueness of the grinder and the feeling that you get from it. You will have a lifetime assistance from the team of Moller. They are a small team. They are dedicated to their towards their customers. And I'm pretty sure if they come with any modifications, they will offer it as an upgrade. If you run into an, any issue, and I will doubt you will ever run into any issue with this grinder and this motor. And last but not least, huge thanks to the Moller team for offering the chance to test their grinders. We've really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, we look forward towards what's coming next. Take care and I hope to see you very soon in the next video. Bye.